Hello and willkommen. Welcome to Aid Now Witness. Buildings like classic cars and buses are time capsules of the era in which they were built. But unlike old vehicles, countless old buildings are in daily use and have been renovated. In this video, we take a six minute tour through the 20th century from 1900 to 1999, visiting 50 landmarks which I've selected, some famous, some not so famous. I took many of the photos during the period of mourning for the Queen. Can you spot how many times in this video I use the word Queen, either on its own or as part of a place name? Well, that's once already. So, what were the first and last buildings to be built in Liverpool in the 20th century? Well, here comes the first one. Coleman's Fireproof Depository in Toxteth. Established 1875, rebuilt 1900, telegraphic address, readiness, Liverpool, telephone number 699-PARK. On my list, it's the first building to be built in Liverpool in the 20th century. Incredible. A time capsule not listed. It looks like a warehouse in Brooklyn. Today, it contains apartments. Opened in 1902, next to the Anglican Cathedral, Toxteth Library, not funded by Andrew Carnegie, though he admired it. The Royal Insurance Building on Dale Street, 1903, now a hotel. Liverpool Anglican Cathedral, architect Giles Gilbert Scott, a product of the 20th century, begun in 1904. But when was it completed? Keep watching to find out. The Olympia Theatre, West Derby Road, 1905, still a concert venue. The Crown Hotel, Skellon Street, opened 1905, next to Lime Street Station. The Queen Victoria Monument, 1906, somehow it survived the Blitz. The Vines Public House, 1907. The Port of Liverpool Building, 1907. The first of the three graces to be built, elder sister to the other two. Queen's Drive, first built 1909, said to be the first ring road in the country. This view is in Walton. The Tower Building on the Strand by Walter Aubrey Thomas, 1910. He also designed the Liver Building, 1911, Superstar Grace and middle sister of the three graces, grade one listed. The Futurist Cinema opened as the Lime Street Picture House in 1912. It stood derelict. It was demolished in 2016. The Florence Nightingale Monument, 1913, near Liverpool Women's Hospital, which we'll see later. The Adelphi Hotel, 1914. Shame about the trees blocking the facade. Hanover House, Hanover Street, 1915. And in the base of the building, the Epstein Theatre. The Cunard Building, 1917, youngest and perhaps the most glamorous of the three graces. The former National Bank on James Street, circa 1920. First of the Whitestone interwar bank buildings. The Mersey Match Factory was built in 1921 and refurbished in 2001. It provides workspaces. The Bank of British West Africa, 1923, now West Africa House. There's a bar with a superb roof terrace on the eighth floor. Keys Court on Church Street replaced St. Peter's Church and opened in 1923. Now it's an entrance to the shopping centre Liverpool One. The Liverpool entrance to the Queensway Tunnel was built between 1925 and 1931. And as part of the project, the Art Deco St. George's Dock Ventilation Tower was completed in 1932. Next to the tunnel entrance, 151 Dale Street, now fully visible after the removal of the flyovers. The former Martins Bank on Water Street, built 1932, has a splendid door and interior. Across the street, the magnificent India Buildings. Its arcade now closed to the public as it houses high security government offices. St. Anthony of Padua, Roman Catholic Church, Mossley Hill, appeared in 1932, and the 1930s-style street lighting on Queen's Drive disappeared in the early 2000s. Speak Airport, one of Europe's foremost Art Deco airport terminals, completed 1937, now a hotel. Hangar 2, Speak Airport, 1941, converted to offices with ERDF support. Liverpool Metropolitan Cathedral Crypt, 1933 to 1941, built as the foundation for a gigantic Catholic cathedral that was never built. And then came World War II. Much of Liverpool city centre was obliterated, but much survived, including Queen Victoria, whom we saw earlier. On the Blitz series in the 1950s, new buildings appeared, one of which, 1 Derby Square, former Pearl Assurance House, 1955. The new Lewis's Department Store, 1956. In recent years, it was restored and converted into apartments. Reliance House Water Street, interwar style building with a white stone facade, completed in 1956. The pleasingly designed Tate and Lyle Sugar Silo in the Liverpool Docks, 1957, and it's grade two listed. St. Ambrose Roman Catholic Church, Heathgate Avenue Speak, 1961. The Pavilion, Jeff Hughes Memorial Sports Ground, Allerton, 1962. 
Liverpool Roman Catholic Metropolitan Cathedral, designed by Frederick Gibbard, Grade 2 Star, took five years to build and was consecrated on the Feast of Pentecost, 14th of May, 1967. St John's Beacon, or Radio City Tower, completed in 1969, opened by Her Majesty the Queen, refurbished in 1999. St John's Shopping Centre replaced the old St John's Market, and it opened for business in 1969. It was later officially opened by the Queen. The former Midland Bank at 4 Dale Street has unusual jewel-like windows, completed in 1971, Grade 2 listed. The Kingsway Tunnel Ventilation Tower, completed in 1971, looks like a gigantic stereo system with two speakers. A matching tower stands on the other side of the Mersey. The Mercure Atlantic Tower was designed to look like a ship and opened in 1973. New Hall Place, brutalist style office complex nicknamed the Sandcastle, was completed in 1974. The Al Rahma Mosque in Toxteth, completed 1974. The focus for Liverpool's Muslim population. The Anglican Cathedral, Grade 1 listed, was finally completed in the year 1978. A Thanksgiving service was held on the 25th of October of that year in the presence of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Clayton Square Shopping Centre was opened in 1979. The Queen Elizabeth II Law Courts on Derby Square took 11 years to build and were officially opened by the Queen on the 2nd of May 1984. The Customs and Excise Building in Queen's Dock was completed in 1993 and has since been converted into apartments. At the front there's a very attractive frieze. Liverpool Women's Hospital, with its white cladding and light blue metal roofs, was officially opened by Diana, Princess of Wales, in November 1995. And here it is, the last building to be built in Liverpool in the 20th century, at least on my list. It's the Queen Square Passenger Facility Building completed in 1999 at a cost of £1.5 million. The Queen Square project was supported by ERDF funding. As we've seen, the Queen and previous Queens have left their mark on Liverpool. In this video, I use the word Queen a total of 18 times, so let that be my tribute to the late monarch. By the way, I use these videos in my online classes to help non-native speakers learn English. Some have come here to study on university courses, including architecture. A PDF copy of the script is available, but only for my students. I want to promote Liverpool to the world, so if you found this video interesting or inspiring, then please like the video, post a comment and subscribe for all notifications. It really helps. Vielen Dank fürs Zuschauen und auf Wiedersehen in Liverpool.